In this video, I want to give you the best, fastest, and simplest roadmap from zero to an advanced Python developer with rock solid Python programming skills. Many people want to learn Python, but are totally confused about what they should learn and in what order, and what is enough to actually call yourself a Python developer or Python engineer. Like for example, myself, I spent so much time figuring out what I should be learning, like when should I be learning this? Do I need this and that? So that is why I'm making this video so you don't have to go through the same struggle yourself. Remember, smart people learn from their mistakes, but the smartest people learn from the mistakes of others. And that is why I make these videos. By the way, this process can be done by anyone from any background. However, I can tell you from experience that if you are trying to just figure out everything on your own, that can be cheaper, but there's still going to be a cost there. Specifically, there is going to be a time cost because you're going to have to spend so much more time figuring out the right reason resources, right ways to learn things, and then you're going to start something and then it's not good and then you have to pick up something else. So really what I would recommend if you are actually serious and you're willing to invest a bit of cash in this process is to go through a program like my program, Python Developer Bootcamp. This is essentially a one-stop shop that will take you through all of the steps that we are about to talk about, including actually teaching you all of these concepts that you need. We'll also guide you through a full web development bootcamp to make you a Python web developer if that is your chosen path you want to go through as a Python developer. And at the end, there is also a full getting hired bootcamp. Most people don't realize that getting a job as a Python developer is not just about having some Python skills. It's also about being able to present yourself as the right kind of candidate, which means making a great resume, having the right kind of LinkedIn profile, understanding how to apply for jobs strategically so you don't have to waste two years applying for jobs with just a couple of tweaks. You could do everything much quicker. That is also what is going to be included in Python developer bootcamp. So that program is going to be linked down below in the description and you can use the code Python for a discount on the program. With that said, however, let's get into the steps. So your step zero, because programmers actually count from zero, is going to come before you even code your first Hello World program. Because before you even start, you want to understand how to actually learn programming properly. Because if you don't, you might end up wasting your time learning stuff without actually acquiring any programming skills that you can use to build real things, let alone land an actual job. To illustrate what I mean by acquiring Python skills, let me give you an analogy. So it's very common for human languages to be taught at schools. Like for example, at your school, you might imagine you could have learned Spanish or French or Mandarin or whatever. In fact, especially in Europe, it's almost always mandatory to have at least one or even two foreign languages that you study potentially for years. So given this, how can it be that almost no one can actually speak foreign languages after they go through years of study? Well, in almost all cases, the people who successfully manage to learn to speak languages are the people who actually use these languages in practice. This could be anything from speaking to people around you if you happen to live in a country where they speak that language or just reading books in the language, watching videos in that language, anything where you are taking the skills that you have learned and actually applying them in practice. And the people who don't learn it simply study French, for example, without actually trying to use French at all. Okay, so how is this relevant for learning programming languages? Well, it's because the same principle applies. There's tons of people who pick up a programming language like Python and try to learn it, but only like 1% or maybe 5% of people actually end up learning it to the point where they can actually say that, yes, I know how to program in Python. Well, it's the same thing. The people who actually learn programming are the people who don't just study programming, but actually try to code real things, who after learning anything, they go and apply it in practice into some real project. So you want to remember to always try to build projects with all of the skills you're learning, which is going to start off with something basic, then something more intermediate, and eventually something more advanced. That is how you actually acquire Python rather than just learning or studying Python. Once you understand that, now let's talk about where we should start. As your first step into learning Python, you just learn to understand the logic of programming. So what do I mean by logic of programming? When you start to code, you'll notice that coding is a sort of a different style of thinking that you might be used to. What we're doing is essentially like speaking the language of logic and getting used to this style of thinking takes a lot of practice, which is why first things first, you want to learn the core building blocks or the foundations of how programming works. Essentially what programming is at the end of the day, it is giving instructions to a computer. There are certain logical rules that people who have created computer programming have defined that these are the rules using which we can give instructions to computers. And actually all of programming at the end of the day is based on a couple of these foundations. So what are these foundations? Well, we have things like variables. So storing things as variables instead of a code. We have functions, so defining functions, which are really just blocks of code that have return values. So what these 
functions actually in return. So learning how this works is super important. Then we have a control flow, meaning if else statements. So if some condition is true, then something will happen. And else or L if, where something else is true, then something else will happen. Then we have loops. So essentially, if you want to run the same lines of code for multiple values in some list or while some condition is true. And then we have data types. So in real life, you can intuitively understand that a number and a string of text are slightly different types of things, right? Similarly, in programming, we have essentially made this very explicit where different types of values are of a different data type in Python. We have data types like strings, we have integers, we have floats, we have booleans. You just want to learn what these basic data types are, why they're used, what they mean, etc. So once you have learned these basic programming fundamentals, and once you can look at the list on the screen right now and sort of understand what all of these things mean, that is when you have sort of core foundations of program. You have the building blocks to start actually coding something real. As your next step, you want to build some basic programming projects using these foundations. Now, at this point, you can't really build anything too complicated, and that is completely fine. The goal here is not to build something super cool, but just to get used to the thinking style of programming, to get to sort of ingrain the logic of programming in your brain. This will take a bit of practice, and you don't need to absolutely master it. Like, this is a thing that you built over time, but this is what you want to focus on here. After you've done this, we can move on to the next level, which is where we're going to start using some intermediate programming tools and concepts that essentially built on top of these foundations. And the goal here is, is to make building stuff using programming fundamentals easier and faster. And the first of these things is learning to use something called libraries. So what are libraries? So essentially in programming, you might imagine that something like basic mathematical functions, like doing the power function or a sum function or a square function. This is something that almost every programmer is going to need at some point in their careers. And while you could manually build this just using the core low-level foundations of programming, it would be quite inefficient in a macro level if every programmer had to manually define all of these functions. So this is why as programmers we have created something called libraries that allow you to use commonly used blocks of code or functions or whatever by simply importing that library inside of your code which will give you access to this functionality. For example in Python you can import the math library that simply gives you access to functions like the square root, multiply, power, etc. Other common libraries include libraries like pandas for data science work, which we'll get back to later, hello for modifying images, requests for accessing web server functionality, and many more for any use case you can think of. Using libraries is not really a skill, like all of these libraries will have something called documentation that will tell you exactly how you're supposed to use them and things like this. The important thing here is to understand the mindset of using libraries, which is that whenever you're coding something, you wanna think like, okay, could there be a library that someone else has already created that allows me to do this rather than having to code up this manually? In fact, once you program a lot, you'll realize that Coding, like actual useful projects at the end of the day, is just about learning and finding the right libraries and then combining them in the right kinds of ways. And this allows you to essentially start building stuff on top of all the sort of knowledge that has already been built up by other programmers who have created these libraries. The other side of the modern programming toolkit is something called APIs. Now, most modern applications in this day and age will either utilize some kind of data and or access some external application. For example, let's say you want to build a bot to automatically tweet for you on X. The problem you will run into is that you cannot actually do that unless you can somehow connect your Python code into Twitter. But luckily for you, Twitter have created something called the Twitter API, where API stands for Application Programming Interface, where essentially what that means is that Twitter have created this like interface where you as a programmer can, can request an API key, which will allow you to essentially send requests to Twitter directly from your Python code as long as you supply this API key with you. And with that, you can like authenticate with your Twitter account and then do anything you could do using the Twitter graphical user interface, but simply via your code. I hope you can see just how powerful these two things are. Because what that means is that after you learn just the basics of how to use APIs and how to use libraries, just with the foundations of Python, you can start building some pretty serious applications. But before we do that, there's one more step left, which is to pick 
your path. At this point, you have enough programming fundamentals and tools under your belt to start applying your skills to a specific niche of programming where you can start actually building some real projects. Being a Python developer is not about knowing everything. There's way too much to know in the world of programming for that to ever be possible for any one developer. Instead, what you want to do is pick one niche of programming and get really good at that one thing. For Python programmers, the most common paths are, for example, data science, where essentially you're using Python to like learn stuff from data, create stuff from it, analyze data. The next very common path is web development. Now, Python is very commonly used in the back end of the web. So this is like the behind the scenes side of the web. In fact, entire web servers can be coded using Python using frameworks like Frask or Django. If you choose this path, you're probably also going to want to learn the basics of the front end, which is why, for example, inside of my program, where there's a full Python web developer bootcamp included, we also actually learn things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so that you can have the foundations of the front end as well, but we mainly focus on the back end. You will learn everything you need to know about how to use Django, the framework on top of which you can build a real web server using Python. The next path is AI and machine learning. So you're probably aware that AI and machine learning are a pretty big deal nowadays. And if Python is your chosen programming language, then you'll be happy to know that Python is essentially the de facto king of the AI and machine learning industry. Almost all of the AI stuff and machine learning stuff is coded using Python because simply Python is the language from which all the tools to build all this AI stuff has been created. Then we have things like scripting, so any kind of automation things you want to do. Python is also by far the best language for all of these kind of things. But now the common theme here, which I hope you're picking up on, is that what we're doing is throughout this part, we're getting more and more practical. We're not learning just random Python concepts for the sake of just knowing what a decorator is or like what this and that concept is. The thing is, all of these individual concepts are something that you will just learn as you need them when you're building some real projects. So rather than making some like crazy curriculum about all these different concepts you need to learn, what I would rather do is make a curriculum based on what you want to build. What sort of problems do you want to solve using code? And then as you build things, you will run into situations where, okay, I cannot do this because I don't know how to do X. So then at that point, you can go and learn X and it will stick to your brain so much better when you're actually learning something, not just for the sake of it, but for the sake of solving some real problem that you have in a real project that you're building, which is why your step five is not to go and learn and memorize all these advanced Python topics, but it's rather to pick one capstone project that's almost going to be your final exam as a Python developer. What this capstone project has to be is something that you can anticipate will use as many of the skills that you have learned in these previous steps. And you want it to be something, ideally, that is slightly beyond what you think you could build. You want to be very ambitious here. For example, if you picked web development as your path in step four, as your capstone project, you might want to build something like a Netflix clone where you have a, like a full database that you're accessing stuff from. Like maybe you can't actually play the movies or things like that. But this is going to integrate and use all the different web development skills that you're going to need as a Python developer. And when you start building the project, you're probably going to be thinking like, there's no way I can do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I can't remember how this works in Django. And that is fine. And that is actually the purpose of it. Because the way you'll be doing this is that you'll start off with some very simple thing. Like you start off by making some very very simple dashboard page for your application. And then you'll think about, okay, what is the next step I need? Okay, I need access to some kind of movie data. So then you'll sort of learn again how to use an API, how to access movie data using an API. And now that you're learning this thing in the context of some actual real project and problem that you're trying to build and solve, that stuff will actually be so much more ingrained in your brain. This is the path, the step-by-step -step path that is actually gonna take you from zero to intermediate to advanced. And I promise you, if you just do this, it is going to work. It is almost impossible that it wouldn't work because the way the human brain works is through practice. If you just force yourself to practice and challenge yourself, it's impossible that you will not learn. With that said, again, if you're looking for one step-by-step -step program that can take you through all these steps, that can teach you all the skills, give you all the projects, to hand all of this to you in a silver platter, you can check out my program Python Development Bootcamp down below in the description. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.